Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036369 0703 768 Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. So when we are talking about sanctifying one another for effective ministry, the first thing that I'm saying is that when husband and wife, when they walk together, when they stand together, even when they pray over any matter together, God said they have good reward for their labor. No matter how energetic you are as a man, alone, God said it's not good. It's not that you are not trying, you are sweating, but it's not good. You won't have good reward. But some say, but my wife doesn't know anything, doesn't know anything. Just allow her to contribute what she does not know. You will see results. Hallelujah. Just permit her to stand with you in prayer. To agree with you in what you, you, you God is asking the two of you to do and to be of one heart with you the result is overwhelming the reward is overwhelming but when you are alone when you are thinking alone it is I don't know what it is you will work so much but there will be so little results. That's the first thing that I want to highlight before I ask them to come in there. Number two. Number two. Look at how God is putting it in verse 10. For if they fall, one, we do what? We lift up his fellow. Now, that gives me an understanding that a woman the one that God is planning for your life is not a baby. It's not the one you are carrying. It's someone who also has capacity to do what? That when you are about to fall, to do what? To lift you up. Sister, I want you to understand this. That a correct home that God is bringing is a home where even inside of you there is Christ's light that is capable of for studying a fall. It's as if once a man is married, God has already given him what I call shock absorber. As if God is saying, Have I not given you a wife? There's no reason for you to fall. Because it's not possible for the two of you to fall at the same time. If you see one husband and wife and they fell at the same time, I'm telling you, there's a problem. There's a problem. What it means is that when one fell first, the other one was not there to help. And as the other one is already down, the second one is not able to help. The unfortunate thing is that the one that is down easily pulls down the other one that is up. How many of you know that it is easier to pull down than to pull up? Let's talk. Let's talk. Eh? But I'm hearing God say, if they fall, one will lift up his head. But woe to him that is alone when he falls, for he has no other person to help him up. So, while we are looking at what is God's 
you know, expectation of our marriage, the first thing we are not here is that, you know, if they fall, it forestalls a fall. So, can you look on your marriage now, your matrimony, your relationship with husband and wife, as something that God has provided to make sure you don't fall? And what is the joy that I'm noting here is that we are rats. Please listen to me. We are rats. Your downfall may be an opportunity for someone outside to climb on you. Your fall with your wife is only an opportunity to do what? To lift you up. Instead of hiding from her who can lift you up, why don't you allow, even if you are falling, let her see it so that you can help. Let him see it so that, you know, he can raise you up. May God not allow you to fall outside there. When you fall outside there, many people will be so happy to trample on you and to ridicule you. And to say, eh, we tell you that you cannot make it. Praise the Lord. Um, would you like to make comment on this, Mom? Before we go, yes. If you have some more things to say before Brad Kofi comes, I'm just discovering from verse nine when he talked about the good reward for their labor and will discover there just as he has said that the labor is one and that it's just that the man has a part of that labor and the woman has a part sometimes um, as the wife is I mean the husband is a pastor the wife may have another kind of uh, gifting let that not be a mistake to think that because you have a different gift, you have a different ministry. It's one and the same ministry. It's just that you are contributing your gift into it, and your husband is contributing his gift into it. It is one and the same ministry. You have a part, he has a part. A husband, a pastor, a wife, a children evangelist, or a singer, it's one and the same ministry. So many people are confused because of that and say, my husband's ministry is different from my own. It's not different. It's just that you have a part and your part is unique. And so part two is unique. If we contribute it together into one and the same ministry, it will do a lot to push the work of God further. A situation in which the wife, you know, the husband is a pastor and the wife goes to establish another ministry somewhere and maybe says uh, the Bora International Intercessory Ministry. Instead of contributing that intercession into this ministry of the husband, you go and establish your own thinking you have another ministry. That would be an erroneous ministry and you are scattering. You are not gathering. There will be no success in such ministry. So it is one and the same ministry for both the man and his wife. And we can see that in the life of um, Isaac and Rebecca. How God joined them together. Their, their calling became one. As soon as that woman said, I will go with him. The same blessing that God pronounced on Mount Moriah upon Isaac. Far away in the awe of the Cardians, God went and put it in the mouth of the parents of Rebecca. He said, Our sister, without a mother of thousands and tens of thousands, and may your enemy and may your descendants possess the gates of the, those who hate them. That was what God said concerning Isaac. How did it happen that this other family far away pronounced exactly the same words? It was God walking in the spiritual, making them one. So it will be 
you know a wrong thing for us to be tearing ourselves apart in terms of ministry thinking we have different ministries it's one ministry basically do you want to say something on this right i have another highlight it's it's not that when husband and wife pool their resources they accomplish more than when they are spending individually for instance if i earn 100 naira and my wife earns 100 naira and we pool our money together how much do we have to spend 200 naira what we will do with 200 naira together is more than what i will do with 100 naira and it's more than what she will do with her own 100 naira and i want to say that for the about 30 years that we have married we are not just working together but we have also pulled our resources together and though we have been in the church for about 27 years now this pooling of resources has helped us to accomplish much more than people who earn even fat salaries because we pool our resources together Thank you. hallelujah i know you may want to ask about that but we want to quickly establish that two are better than one i don't know how to explain it but the truth is that when you are not working together when you are separate you duplicate am i right there's a lot of useless duplication because everybody wants to be on his own but when you have come to see that we are one what happens is that instead of duplication and competition there is complementary nature there is contribution and you know when you contribute into one another something becomes more whole becomes more complete more wholesome two the bible says are better than one so what we are noting is that your oneness as husband and wife will bring increase to your labor and she said we don't have two ministries we are not saying that we have the same gift but whatever gift you have, whatever gift she has, the truth of the matter is that they are all part of one thing that God wants to do through you. Actually, when we started, the first thing that God had to make us to see is that we have only one garment for ministry. And that we wear it together. And if it should tear, we lose ministry so it becomes very critical to recognize that the two of us we are one and what God is expecting us to do is to do it together in oneness that's when he sends results that's when prayers are answered without delay praise the Lord now before I leave room for your own contribution on this the next two verses the next two verses said if two lie together then they have heat but how can one be warm alone may i say to you that many many husbands are feeling cold what i say Many husbands are cold, they are feeling cold, they are shivering because of cold. And many, many wives also, they are also feeling cold. Yeah. Many wives also are shivering for cold, they need a blanket. What did I say he needs? And who is that blanket? 
tell your husband that you are my blanket. I have no blanket. I'm not hearing them. They are not talking to themselves. The Bible says, how can a man be warm alone? Many, many times you think as he has preached it hot. We think it's hot. Suddenly you see him sitting down there and he is depressed. Because there's nobody to share with. No warmth of fellowship. No warmth of relationship. So, and I want to inform you that part of spiritual health that makes a man effective in ministry is warmth. He needs to be kept warm. Warmth. Warm fellowship. Warmth of relationship. And warmth of playing. Playing together. Sometimes you see a man is supposed to be a preacher but you see him like this. His face is glued to television. He's looking for warmth. Unfortunately, he's looking for it in the wrong place. So, we want to note that part of the reason why God is established our homes is such that we can sanctify each one for ministry by keeping him warm. I talk of warmth of fellowship, warmth of assurance. Warmth of assurance. I'm talking very seriously about men now. Sometimes you think because the men use both face that they are not feeling a sense of am I accepted? So several times you find that many, many pastors, preachers, they fall into the hand of church ladies, choir members. Do you know why? When he finish preaching, this girl comes and I say, oh, pastor, that's great. You have never been better than this in my eyes. Yes. Just look cute. And she smiled and said, Carl, I don't know whether anybody has told you. I want to tell you, I really, really appreciate you. You know, she has sown a seed. Now, the same pastor comes to his house. Are you hearing me? And the wife didn't even have space to come out and greet him and say, Welcome, how was the church service? The first language in the mouth in the mouth of the wife is, You don't come back. From inside the room. You don't come back. I don't know why you forgot to leave money for for granite oil. Now I know you are back now and you will say you are hungry, but there's nothing. Else. Welcome. Now you see, you won't know that what you have done to him, you are sending him back to that to that girl. Do you know that many wives are sitting here? It doesn't bother you to appreciate your husband's preaching. When he finishes preaching, you don't make a comment. You don't say, Hi, thank God. That's a good message. I thank God the way God helped you. Maybe you think he doesn't need it. Maybe you think he doesn't need affirmation. 
maybe you imagine that well he already is in the spirit he doesn't need anybody to encourage him except if he is no more a man all men need encouragement are we communicating eh? and why did God put you there you are the only one that can encourage him and it will not lead to sin oh my god you are not hearing me you are the only one that can tell him and say car you look great in fact the way you spoke i was just wondering is that my husband you see no matter how he criticizes him in the church council he knows that when he comes home he's a king in his own house and God set you up there that's part of the sanctifying for ministry but when a man is being battered outside and is being criticized inside do you know what happens to him he is no more sure of who he is he is now looking for identity and sometimes you don't understand that it's part of your ministry to keep him warm hallelujah the same need is for the wife many many women and it's very important for you to know that when your wife dresses when she goes to make her hair do you may not know why she leaves it open you don't know why she's waiting for your comment until you have made comment she's not sure whether she's beautiful anymore oh lord they say what is brother like really talking about now that is the matter sisters am i am i talking a miss i'm talking well abby the first comment that your wife is waiting for after she finishes dressing when she comes from before the mirror and she talks are you hearing me she needs to hear what does my husband say about it but unfortunately many husbands they are too spiritual they are in the spirit they don't see anything It's only in the night they see. It's only in the night when when light is is dim, you now come around and say, mm, you know, <laughs> and then ah, anyway. Praise the Lord. The warmth of relationship the warmth of affirmation the warmth of assurance then the warmth of conjugal relationship you see it in that verse it's part of what sanctifies a man you know that when a man is confident in God and he knows that his wife believes in him he goes on he knows that even if nobody in the congregation believe what I'm saying, at least I have somebody who is by me. But woe unto that husband who is not even sure if his wife is following him. It's dangerous. The thought, I mean the last point I want to highlight before our people come around it again is that our oneness is for warfare 
What did I say it is for? Warfare. I say it's for warmth. It's for warmth. It's to forestall a fall. It is to bring good reward. But now, finally, it is for what? Warfare. So if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. Please take note. When the two of you combine together and stand over a matter against the devil, you are, you are on the winning side. And that's why when the devil wants to attack a, a man, the first crack he wants to create is the crack between him and his wife. When a man and his wife cannot stand together, may I tell you, they are losing their battles. They will lose the battle in the church, they will lose the battle in the larger family, they will lose the battle anywhere else. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. When it is Jesus, husband, and the wife standing together, the Bible said, is a threefold cord that cannot be easily broken. Praise the Lord. Warfare. May I say to you that this warfare, I want to say, I don't know how to put it, it's not only spiritual warfare I want to talk about today. Every warfare, every battle. May I suggest to you, brothers and sisters, that even when your husband is having a battle in church, are you hearing me? Stand with him. What I say you should do? Stand together with him. Even if you are going to criticize his activity in your bedroom and say, for my husband, that thing you did, I don't like it, stop it. But when you come out, where do you stand? Stand together. When they are blaming him, do what? Accept it together. Don't let it be that when they are blaming your husband, he say, well, I thank God. I thank God. I told him. Did I not tell you that I'm not part of this foolishness? Eh, hey, Baba, thank you very much. Me, I'm not part of this thing. I thank God. Even though I marry him, he's on his own. Do you know that whatever favor Thing you have gained with the people outside, you will pay dearly for it in your marriage. When people have found a way to come in between you for whatever reason, they will leave you with more damage. You are never blessed. May I say to you, even children must never come between. Are we together? Your children at best, they can come to the two of you. Don't come between you. That's how you will not lose the battle over your children. If you are separated, honestly speaking, and the children are in between you, you will suffer the battle. Your children will, will be lost. Don't think, well, uh, she, I love I love my child. I love my child. If your father don't care, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you are making a mistake. Of that child will be lost. And he will turn tomorrow to blame me. For warfare. Warfare over our children. Because the devil attacks our children. We need to stand together. Warfare against the world system. The world will like to tear you apart. Stand together. Warfare, even against ministerial attack. Stand together. 
hand warfare against the devil himself stand together may the lord bless you i don't know whether you'd like to make more points on the matter of warmth and on the matter of warfare before we go ahead uh, right okay mom yeah okay now when the children are there and you want to reach a point that will expose your nakedness before the children you jump it so you can't be speaking about such things before the children it becomes important that husband and wife must have what we call a couple's time together regularly make it a regular point of duty because if you are going to develop together and your two will be better than one if these two shall become one flesh there is this joining that we recognize in three planes the joining you know in terms of praying together planning together and playing together praying together planning together and playing together this is something that will enhance your oneness your relationship as you pray together over issues or even just to pray together to worship god and 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 learn before god it may not even be for spiritual warfare just to grow together study the scriptures together or read a book together he reads to my hearing i read to his hearing and then we pray about the lessons we have learned we are fellowshipping together that is very crucial it's not only just you know it's, it's also not only in church that you should fellowship with your wife together alone together where you can open to one another be naked before one another and you will not be ashamed it's very important to create that 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 time because you can't do it in the public but once you are together you can you know you can discuss with one another issues that you can't discuss with other people but when that time is not there sincerely speaking your oneness will have a question mark you will not go too far so this warmth of fellowship is very important between husband and wife apart from you alone with god and apart from you together with the children praise the lord thank you you want to say something on this um we learned early in our marriage that the family should have three effective altars which has already been expressed the first the individual one then the family one and then also the one that you have with your wife and for us we do this but specifically two days in the week two days in the week you know is for us my wife and i whatever whether we are in boko or wherever we will have to meet and then we will look at issues and then we will pray about them and things like that and honestly speaking it has been very very effective apart from the fact that every day while we retire in bed we will still pray but those two days in the week are special are we together are you following please when you have space the question our sister is asking we dealt with it in our text a three-dimensional coupling there are three dimension of coupling of joining together the joining together of your spirit of your mind and of your body and may i say that uh, this oneness that we are dealing with that our sister has talked about praying which to us as pastors is very important and that's one big issue but i can see the devil he will make you pray with everybody else 
but not your wife. He will make you so busy, you are prayer partners everywhere. But may I say to you, your first prayer partner, your principal prayer partner, is your wife. That's the person that without our agreement, your prayer will run a grant, as we read the other day. So, as we are talking, our brothers said, they have set apart some two days within which they will meet and share and pray and look at issues. That, I want to encourage. You may not be able to do two days every week, but you know there are days when many of you as pastors, there's a day off for you, if you have been able to create it. A time when you are not running up and down. If it were possible, get your wife and sit down together. Just pray. Even just praying together over your ministry, over your children, and over each other is such a blessing. Such a blessing. Such a blessing. To put your hand around your wife and bless her every morning is a blessing. Are you hearing me? Don't just say, I'm praying for her. Pray for her to hear. How do you feel when I'm praying for you? Eh? She feels nice. I see I should just do a hair like that and just be collecting my prayer. <laughs> you see, it's very important. It's important for your wife to even hear what you are telling God about her. And it's very great for you to hear what your wife is telling God about you. It does so much. So the moment of praying together is a critical factor. As we look at our own marriage for years, God, right from the first day, when we agreed that we are now going to get into this relationship, He gave us a day. And God is faithful for years. He honors that day. Whenever it is time, is that, and only God can can explain how much battles we have won on those knees. So much work that God is doing left and right here and there. I can tell you the truth is that several of it were born not in the public. They were born on our knees together. Only one thing that you can rob me of and I will be very, very unhappy is if you take her prayer life away from me. Because I don't need money, I need prayer. May the Lord help us. So husbands, Please, please, how wonderful it is when you are finished preparing your sermon and you tell your wife, I don't know how the Holy Spirit may move us tomorrow, but this is what I am burdened to share. Can you pray with me over it? And she stands with you, she's praying over it. Lord, Lord, this message, help my husband to deliver it. And as you are standing on the pulpit, you, you, your eyes looking at her, she, and she, you know, sometimes she just just like this. I say, go on, go on. God will help us. God will help us. God will help us. Do you know that it keeps you running? But sometimes, you know, you are just on the pulpit. Your wife doesn't know anything. You never told her that you anything. So she's there. And maybe when you are preaching, she has slept. And your eyes goes down, you saw that your wife is sleeping. Do you know what happens to you immediately? Something just strikes you. Bam! That even my wife is not even hearing me. You know it's, it's not good. May the Lord help us. And do you know some of you that are driving? How wonderful it is for you and your wife 
to do what? To drive together. I know not many husbands like their wife to sit at their side when they are driving. Do you know why? Every time you want to press the brake, back glass! Slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Say, no, I know how to drive. Leave me alone. Do you know, can I tell you the truth? May God not allow anything to happen to you. If anything happens to you, and anything goes wrong, many sisters, many brothers will come and cry, but only one woman will be a widow. Eh? Does she have a reason to sit tight when you are driving? Eh? She does. So when you see, and it's part of your fellowship, it's part of is, is the sense that somebody cares enough for you. Don't say you always trouble me too much. What is the other place we have talked so much about prayer? I want to talk about the second joining. Because, you know, we talked yesterday about sexual relationship and all of that. But there is another joining before we come to sex. Is the joining together of your mind. Having the same mind. You won't have the same mind if you are not involved in doing the same thing. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the time together, the time, the time of chatting together. If your husband loves to watch football. Are you hearing me? I'm not saying as a pastor you should be addicted to watching football. But if your husband lost Man U and uh, Chelsea, eh? And you know that whenever Man U is playing, you can never get your husband to hear anything. He says, like Yes! Yes! Hey! We will deal with them. You know what to do not to lose your husband. You must help him to love my you. Are we together, sisters? Go and sit with him. Say, ha! Ah! Then start mentioning the name of the player. You will see your husband. He said, ha! Ah! Yes. You see. So he will start talking. He will start talking. And from my you, you will talk other things. All other issues that he has no time to hear you about. He will start giving you space. Are we together? You say, I'm not interested in that. For you to enter into his world, you must be interested in his interests. And it is this kind of thing that we continue to make you to maximize your time together that will make you to become one. Then you will understand how he thinks, how he reacts, how he and then as a husband you will understand what your wife says when something happens and that makes you to interpret her very easily and very quickly and then the third joining which we talked about yesterday is the joining your bodily joining which we call the conjugal relationship so sister brother this is important we want to see a couple that are flowing together one of the things i want to share with you this afternoon is that the more the yoruba man says if we stay long on soap that is you know our fathers in those days they wrap the black soap with what with leaves and when soap stays long inside the leaf what does the leaf also become it becomes so there is no way to become one unless you interact and i'm looking forward to a time when you know when i'm preaching and sometimes you think i have all the bible passages on my head and it's not so sometimes all my bible passages just evaporate 
I have an encyclopedia here. I just said, where is that Bible verse? She said, okay, give me one minute. And she will bring it. I said, this. Finish. Then I'm rolling again. And when she starts to say something, she may just spark something. And my own spirit will catch fire. I can spend the next two hours dealing with one thing she said in five minutes. And she said, ah, thank you, my husband. I didn't see it to that extent. I said, but you sparked the fire. That's what we're talking about. We must build so that this blessing that God has put in our relationship might become useful and usable for ministry. Am I, I don't know whether I'm communicating with you. Now, all these books that you see, they put my name there. You think I'm the only writer? No. If I finish writing a page, I cannot send it out to her until she has done what? Has read it. I want to tell you a secret, and I'm praying that you will understand it. The secret is here. As a preacher, most people that relate with you, they are your admirers, and they are your psychophants. There are very few of those who hear you that can correct you. Most of them, they will only clap for you, even when you are foolish. But God has given you a woman who can look yet respectfully but into your eyes and say, my husband, what's wrong? You know, sometimes you are laughing. Everybody thinks that you are laughing. She's the only one that knows that this laughter has a killer. So she's the one that says, ah, ah, my husband. I hope all is well. Say, well. She said, what is it? That's the only person that can probe into your life. I have had so many people that will read my books and they will never see anything wrong. But when Sister Shade picks it, she will, she will normally pick it with her, her pencil. And as she's reading it, she's the one that has the liberty and the boldness to change my sentence. Every other person thinks that every sentence I make is anointed. I don't know whether you get what I'm talking about. So you make a grammatical error. They think it's, that's how the Holy Spirit gave the utterance. You need a wife who understands your heart. Who knows what you want to say that you did not have the right word to say and she will say it for you. But that doesn't happen overnight. It happens out of deep fellowship. And she has no, she cannot write anything, no matter how she has finished. She saying, you have not read that thing. So for all her writing, you will see me inside it. For all that I write, she is there. She is the final editor of all my works. And all the brothers we are working with, they know that you can't push anything out until my wife has finally read and endorsed. So it's okay. It's not because she studied English. Even though she's good in English, are we together? What she judges about my work is not the English. 
What do you think she judges? The spirit. And who knows the spirit of a man? Except the man himself. Who else can know my spirit? Except the bone of my bones. This is where we are talking. The level of oneness that sanctifies you for ministry is a very deep issue. And I want you to please build it. It's a blessing. It's not a cause. It's not a damage. It's not a hindrance. At first, I used to think, no, 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 no. God has spoken. Hey, 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 hey. She said, cool down. Let me go through it. By the time she has put her hand into it, something more perfect comes out. You go and say, ah, I believe this book is great. I say, yes, I collect it. Because I'm the one to collect it as a head. And she's happy. She's happy to always allow me to collect it. For me, I know that what I'm collecting, I only collect it for us. May the Lord help us. I don't know whether we are communicating at all. Eh? So everything together. Everything. Our brother has talked about your, 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 your income together. Please. Your children. They must meet with you. How? Together. When you want to talk to a child. This is how we sit down. God it this is not when the children have become teenagers so it's not when they they are now getting married or no it is even when they were so small can you imagine that <laughs> our baby one year even though she does not know what we are talking when it is time and we want to do something with the baby the two of us will be here and the baby will be like this be looking at she don't hear he don't say she don't say we wanted that child to keep knowing that between dad and mom no difference and again and again i have found that god is happy sometime i'm not home my wife has said something to a child and maybe the child does not know that we are one calls me from afar I say dad and in the exact word I will say the same thing the child say ah you people you are one oh. ah, why is it that exactly that's exactly what mommy told me I say ah but you know now but most of the time so that we don't gamble whatever she has said to a child because I'm not home she will be the first to quickly do what? To inform me so that by the time a child catches me, I'm saying, eh, just like mommy said, eh? you have talked. We have talked. May God help us. This home is for the sanctification of our lives and of our ministries. May the Lord help us to build it in the name of Jesus Christ. If I jump to number three quickly, I think we must have answered number three now. I stand to commend the effort of our daddy and mom, William and Badia Tony, because I believe that we, we have strengthened our counseling effort. Because I believe as we are returning back to our destinations, all what you have taught us shall never be wasted. Because we shall make use of them in our various churches. I pray that God will continually be your effort. I shall be your wisdom, your understanding, and your knowledge. In Jesus' name. Amen. You see, right from the day of John Wesley, I mean, sorry, uh, John Baptist, the kingdom of God survived violence. And I want to say, that this problem or the issue we are treating about husband and wife started right from the beginning 
of the establishment of marriage on earth by God Himself. And I don't know whether that is one of the reasons why majority of you know Christian homes are having problems with their spouses. My question is this. Which one is preferable? If truly you want to serve God, you want to be a man or a woman of God, which one is preferable? Shall it be or we go into marriage? One, if you see the lives of early apostles and disciples, it is because of this, you know, their wives. That have it, that they are giving that give, that give them problems, and I want to ask that what happens to the wife of Rapport and his children? Two, two. The issue, the, the issue of barrenness between pastor. And his wife, barrenness. So, barrenness sir. No baby. So, no baby. All it's right. so common now. Very, very conspicuous. And okay. I will not mention my the denomination anyway. But some of our, you know, our friends for years they don't have children. Even we have divorce, and which is not uh, good anyway. So how can we solve this problem? Number one is. Tell us what happened to the life and the wife and children of Bradford. Because with that way we are unable to know the name, whether he marries or not. Because oh, what you. we know is that he was very, very active when he was alive. Oh. John Wesley also had the problem with his wife. But tell us whether he has a wife or not. May God bless you, Jesus name. Thank you. Since he said I should tell them, Brother Paul, the Bible did not tell us that he is married. He was not married, neither did he have children outside. He served the Lord and he said that is according to the gift that God gave him. Are you getting me? But that same Paul that did not marry never never discredited marriage he actually <coughs> was the one that God used to write Ephesians chapter 5 Colossians chapter 3 where we have all the issues instructions about Christian hope alright now <coughs> may I say to you that originally marriage the Bible said is desirable and that it is a help to fulfill, to bring a man to complete fulfillment of what God has called him to do. If you marry the bone of your bones, and if you take time to read the manufacturer's manual, marriage estate is a great estate. It's a great estate greater than celibacy. Are we together? Two are better than one. <clears throat> now, when you look at people whose marriages failed, as our brother is pointing out, some of us <clears throat> we will not have married. As we are looking at many, many, many people's marriages that didn't work, to the extent that we were almost thinking that anybody who wanted to become useless should go and marry. But as we study God's word, God began to say, in the beginning, it was not so. And that marriage, according to God's ordinance in Genesis chapter 2, will give you an increase in life and ministry. But if your marriage goes to Genesis chapter 3, which again, when you go through this, we will see we spent time dealing with Genesis 3 marriage and Genesis 2 marriage. Genesis 3 marriage is marriage after the fall. Marriage 
of men and women that are struggling with Mr. Flesh. And such marriage is what Brother Paul was describing in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and said, those who marry, they will have trouble in the flesh. Are we together? But if, as the word of God comes to you and you begin to understand God's principles for Christian home from Genesis chapter 2, you will see that the parallel to Genesis 2 marriage is Ephesians 5 which is comparing your home as a, a, a shadow of the marriage relationship between Christ and his church. And it's great. And you will see that it is in the home that all the correct virtues of a spiritual leader is actually formed and sustained. If you ask me honestly, I would recommend that you get married. Are we together? If you ask me and say, sir, should I be celibate or should I marry? I will tell you that God's ordinance is that you should marry. It is an exception if God were to say, you be a eunuch for the kingdom of God. When he says that, that does not make you more spiritual than those who got married. Are we together? And it's better to marry than to burn, as the Bible says. Don't say you want to be celibate, but inside your bedroom every night, you are struggling with uh, masturbation. Anybody that is passing with his eyes and man, man, go away. You want to tempt somebody. I think you need to go and get married and settle down very well so that God can be honored in your marriage. Praise the Lord. Now, <clears throat> Paul did not marry. John Wesley got married. And his marriage did not work out well. And it's not because God wanted him to fail. <clears throat> I'll tell you why. Even though they were great revivalists, they didn't have the opportunity that we are having here. They didn't have opportunity of discipleship. Are we together? The fact that you are a man of God does not mean you already know how to marry you. And that's the problem. Many people, many young, like all these brothers were sent now to go and sit down and learn, learn how to make a choice. Because they are already in the priesthood. Many of them think that they already know how to marry. I remember a young Anglican priest that wants to marry a sister when she when he wrote a letter to her. He said, Can't yourself be lucky that God is persuading me to marry you? So when they have called it a correct name, the dross. <laughs> so you know. I say what? We ask, can you come? Let's know. Is that what are they talking about? We can't say people want to marry, so there's nothing. Do you know that his marriage did not last two weeks before they began to have all the all the trouble? The reason is because he is not taught. Let me remind you what made John Wesley's marriage to scatter. If you have read some of his biography, number one, he didn't have time to marry. Eh? But don't forget that the Bible made provision that if you get married, you don't go to war for at least one year. Biblical standard is that a man must concentrate on his marriage at least for the first one year before you can be moved anywhere. Oh, you are now hearing me. That's why, for example, somebody can say, we want to do our wedding now. And I say, okay, yes. Where are you settling? He said, you know, um, I'll just marry and then there is uh, a scholarship for me to go to the UK and then uh, 
my wife is going to be doing a course in Ibadan and then uh, we will be meeting during the holidays. I said, sorry for you. Sorry. Go and do all of that first. When you are ready to marry. Marriage is not wedding. Wedding is only one day. Marriage is a life marrying. And to marry means to match things from this side to this side until they become one. And you need time for it. So many times you people get married, you have no time to marry. John Wesley, I could remember when they could fix his wedding. They managed to find a place to marry, to wed. That same afternoon, John Wesley was riding a horse for about 20 something hours to go and preach somewhere. It is the best man that helped uh, his wife to get to where they are going to stay. She never saw her husband for the next one week. And that's how his marriage kept going. Sometimes they say, look, souls are perishing. Oh yeah, come, come, jump on the horse. And the woman is saying, hey, okay, we go. That's why his marriage scattered. It was not the Bible that scattered it. It was not preaching that scattered it. It was foolishness. They didn't obey the Bible. So when you say, hey, 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 marriage make many men of God to fall, it's not true. Marriage made me to, to rise. Are you understanding? If we are going to follow it according to the manufacturer's man, I have spoken to sisters here already. When you have decided to marry, marry. If your husband is posted to a village, since you want to marry him, what do you do? Follow him. It's better for you and him to be eating kuli kuli and gari than for you to be eating salad in Indonesia. Why he is on the other side? Your marriage is finished. And what again is your pleasure in life? Do you know that your best reward in life, according to Ecclesiastes chapter 9, is the wife you marry? Enjoy yourselves. Enjoy yourself. So instead of marrying and going away, just going up and down, no. If you are not ready to marry, don't marry yet. And all the people that work with us, they know it's our principle. It's our principle. We would not marry you now and post you somewhere. We want you and your wife to stand together, to grow together, to know one another. The next thing I want to say, when you marry, marriage is between you and the woman you marry. For this caution, a man leave his father and mother and cleave. Can I tell you what makes many people's marriage weak? It's possible that before you got married, some junior sisters, eh? Some of your junior sisters and cousins, they are all living with you. They are taking charge of the kitchen. So when you are now married, already there. So as your wife is entering, they say, what is this woman you give? Anytime she wants to say, no, no, that's not that we do it here. Eh? We don't put onion before we put this. Our brother doesn't like it like that too. And unfortunately, you come out, you say, well, these guests have been with me before you came. Is it because you are here that I will drive them away? They are the owners of this house. You know you are in trouble now. 
you are not married. We recommend, let me tell you what I recommend, if you'd like, so that you will not be tempted to carry a extended family for your young marriage. I recommend that you don't start with a four bedroom house. Oh my God, you are not hearing me. A room and a parlor is enough for you. You know what I mean? There's nowhere to hide. If you have four bedroom, I'm coming. When you have four bedroom, when your wife is saying something that you don't like to hear, you know what you do? You carry your Bible, you go to the other room and When you finish all that shaba ba 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 prayer, you pretend to sleep there. You know you're already breaking your marital bed. But when it is a room and parlor, whatever she says, you have nowhere to go. Am I right? It is rubbing on each other that we connect. Contact is an important is an important factor in joining. Am I right? Don't allow anything between your contact. If it is you and your wife, if you woke up in the morning and you don't feel like talking to her, honestly, you have nobody else to talk to. After one hour, you will talk. But if there are already two, three other people in the house, you know there are times that you leave your wife in the room you are not talking. Then you come and say, say but David, praise God. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, I just read Ezekiel. And then they say, yes, which chapter? So they will be talking and talking just to give her a headache. If I know, what am I going to do? I will drive away David from your house. I say, David, you are an intruder in that mind. They are too young for your presence. Many of you got married, you have not understood each other's language before intruders began to come into your midst. That's what weakened your marriage. If it can be corrected, please correct it. Hallelujah. And when God blesses you with a big house, may I say to you, no matter how many rooms you have, you have only one room. What did I tell you? How many rooms do you have? Only one room. That's your bedroom. Don't have two rooms. We refuse you to have master bedroom, mistress bedroom. It's the devil's uh, design. God didn't design marriage like that. They have only one room, not two rooms. Don't think it's been a big man to say, My wife has her bedroom. I have my own bedroom. I don't like disturbance. It's the devil that is tempting you. No matter how many rooms is in your house, how many rooms do you have in that house? Only one. Only one room. And how many beds do you have? Only one bed. Men of God are we together. One bed. One room, one bed. God will help us in the name of Jesus. And if you are not seeing a baby, where do you put the baby please? either on the ground or on the baby's court or on this other side 
baby not in between may god help us say why is black believe for closing to our bedroom now i must do so today baby they must not be where in between not in the middle in case your husband just want to put his leg let him have that liberty without wounding the baby <laughs> eh? that baby is a passenger it's not part of the marriage oh. they will soon drop how many of you have dropped all your passengers let me see your hand up they are already going you are back to where you started they are passengers their destination is not your destination oh. may the Lord help you brothers are you happy with me today? God bless you. All right. I think the way our time is gone, we must stop now. Praise the Lord. The Lord will help us. So, would you like to please pray for us? Uh, we we'll ask Sister Shade to please pray. We can never exhaust this clinic. All right. Uh, our pastor is saying even though I need to quickly end that the issue of barrenness may I say that even though barrenness is something that we we want to pray against that God will fulfill his promise in our marriage yet may I say that barrenness is not a reason to divorce Actually, when you start understanding the purpose of God in marriage, you will discover that children is not primary. What is primary is the communion, is the relationship. We thank God that God will give us children. But if our children have not come, it does not reduce in any way our marriage. So may I say to any of the couples that are here that we are still waiting, please enjoy one another. Work with one another. Don't let the lack of issues, don't let it come as an overwhelming issue that will scatter this relationship. Your marriage is honorable. Children are only the heritage of the Lord. The Lord will help us. And we will be praying, and I think we should pray more, that God will handle barrenness in the midst of the minister's family in the name of Jesus Christ. So please, lead us to pray. Shall we pray together? Our Father in heaven, we give you praise for these opportunities, these few days that you have given unto us to look into the issue of our matrimony. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of marriage. Lord, we thank you. When you love a man, you give him a woman. When you love a woman, you put her under the cover of a man. Lord, we are very grateful. We know, Lord, that it's your love for us that made you to put us together with our spouses. We pray that you will receive all the praise from our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you have spoken to us in diverse ways. You've shown us, oh God, what it means to marry and to marry properly to relate together in marriage and to bring out the purpose of God concerning our homes. And there are many of our families here that are hurting. Many relationships are hurting and they are wondering, I 
have never experienced this kind of thing they are talking about. Many, it is an addition to their own home. Father, we are pleading with you that wherever there are hearts in our hearts, in our midst, as families, may you bring healing today in the name of Jesus. The word of God you have spoken. The Bible says he sent forth his word and he healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. As you have sent your word into our hearts concerning our homes in this week, let there be healing in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, O oh God, that our families will become what you want it to be. Our relationships, O oh God, will bring forth and show forth your glory in the name of Jesus Christ. You ordained at the beginning that marriage should be an equipment to the fulfillment of God's will. And many marriages are actually pulling down God's purposes. But today we pray that as you have spoken your word to us, let our marriages become a plus, become an advantage, become an equipment for us to excel in ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we ask, there are still some who may be having questions. We pray that you will answer our questions. Holy Spirit, we can never have been able to answer every question here. We plead with you, Father, that we, as we go from here, your Spirit will go with us and speak to us and speak into our relationships in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, there are many homes that are having problems about childbearing. We know that that is also part of marriage, even though it is not the whole thing. We plead with you that in your mercy, you will provide children, godly offspring in each of our homes in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that godly children will be the result of our homes. Lord, children who will adorn the gospel, may you grant it unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. There may also be some whose children are not working orderly. We pray that you will bring such children back to order in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, that they will become the fruit of our labor, even in the kingdom of God. Cause each of these children to know you, to know you, Lord, to regard our God and to respond to the gospel in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We thank you for what you have done. Thank you for your word we have heard. We pray that you will give increase to it in our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for someone among us who is requesting for prayers for the twin sister who is about to deliver right now. And they are thinking of doing surgery. We commit that sister into your hands. Father, we pray that your very presence will be there right now to deliver that woman and deliver her safely, deliver her smoothly, deliver her without any complication. In the name of Jesus Christ, we rebuke the hands of the enemy concerning that delivery. We rebuke you, Satan. You will not prosper in that sister's life and in the life of the baby in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for hearing us. Lord, we thank you once again for these sessions we have had together. We return all the glory to you. You are the one who has done all that you have done. It's been your hand alone. We give you all the praise. Take all the adoration. Let it return to you. Let it redound unto your praise and to your honor. And let it bring increase to our ministries, to our churches, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. We bless and we worship you. We have prayed together in Jesus' name.